Do audiophile network switches make a difference? This is a controversial topic I know, so just stop typing your negative Nancy comments right now and just listen. Unless you have had first-hand experience with the Nordos QNet, I don't want to see a single comment saying that you know for a fact that network switches don't make a difference. With that out of the way, now that all the closed minds have left, let's get into the video. Hey everyone, my name is James, welcome back to The Soundline. Today I'm talking to you about the Nordost QNet. That's this wee guy here. This is a five port audio file grade network switch that you can use with music streamers, music servers, other devices that are plugged in in your home entertainment unit that need network connection that you want to perform better. So what you need to understand about the Nordost network switch compared to other network switches is that most other brands when they want to make an audiophile grade network switch they will borrow a base platform from another brand like TP-Link or HP or something like that and then they will tweak the components in it, put some slightly higher grade connectors in, do this and that and then say this is our switch, it sounds really good. The Nordost QNet is a ground up design, they haven't borrowed this design from any other networking company, this is entirely their own design and you can see that in the architecture and I'll talk a little bit about the design in a minute and you'll see why they wanted to do it their own way. So if I turn this around here, these five ports here, first thing I want to talk about is the positioning of them. Most network switches that you see, all these ports will be shunted up right next to one another and that's the main reason that Nordost wanted to design their own network switch. When you've got all those ports shunted really close together, it's very easy for interference and crosstalk to occur. By Nordost designing their own one, they were able to have their network ports all spaced out by a decent amount of space here, like at the very um, surface here, there is a good 25 millimeters or 30 millimeters or so between each of these ports, making it very hard for crosstalk to occur between ports. The other thing that they did is they specifically chose different types of ports to go in here. Um, ports one through three are your standard gigabit ports that you'll find in most modern network switches, but ports four and five are 100 megabit ports only. So that is slower but there's a reason they do that. 100 megabit ports measurably have less noise on them or less interference than what gigabit ports have. So yes, they've given you two ports mainly for your music devices. So this is where you would have something like a music server or a music streamer plugged in and possibly like a NAS drive if that's your server or something like that. And then ports one through three, obviously one of them needs to be the incoming signal from your main network switch or from your router and then you've got a couple more that can be used for other things that you may have in your entertainment cabinet or rack like a Chromecast or Apple TV or a Blu-ray or something like that. So what this network switch claims to do, obviously it's an audiophile network switch, it's designed to make your system sound better or your streaming or your music server sound better. Uh, the best way I can describe what this actually does is it reduces radio frequency noise and interference across the ports, both on the incoming signal and on the outgoing signal. So if there's any noise on the line that is coming into the switch from the rest of your network, it is going to reduce that noise or, or distortion or interference or anything coming in. And also anything else that is plugged into it, for instance, if you have a Chromecast plugged into this, that may also be generating a bit of noise on the network signal and that is the switch is gonna stop that from getting back into your hi-fi system because it acts as a filter on all five ports. That's the best way to describe it. It's very similar to the Isotec Sirius power board. It's a filtering multi-box that prevents noise from coming in, noise from going out, and noise from recirculating inside of the system. By having the ports separated, that is what really helps cut down on that crosstalk and interference between the ports. So moving on a little bit from the how it works and what it does, uh, I want to talk a little bit about upgradability with this thing. Out of the box, so I've tested this with just you know standard network cables, standard power supply on both a streamer and a server, and I'll talk a little bit about how the sound changed with and without this in a minute. But I do just want to quickly talk about the power supply. So this is a low voltage device. The power supply in it is nine volts DC. And this is the power supply that comes in the box. It's your standard switch mode power supply. One thing we know for a fact from testing and from theory is that high quality power supplies make a massive improvement to performance on just about any audio component. Enter the Nordost Q-Source. So the original intention with the Q-Source was to power 
a handful of Nordos Q points, but I'm not going to talk about those today. I just want to talk about how this and this go together. So this Q source basically is a high quality linear low voltage power supply. It takes a standard IC15 connection input. It's got some 5 volt outputs for those Q points that I talked about, and then it's got a couple of variable outputs here. One of those outputs can be set to 9 volts. So with one of these cables that Nordos makes, which by the way is some, something also worth mentioning, the connections that they use on this and on the power supply are Limo connectors, which are really high quality DC connectors that lock into place and have fantastic shielding. I can just plug this directly into here. So now I have replaced this cheap digital power supply with a really high grade linear one. So I just wanted to mention upgradability you have that option and it's really worthwhile having a listen to. Now, network cables. I tested this both with standard CAT5 and CAT6 uh, patch leads and network cables, as well as with Nordost's high quality premium network cables, but the reason I wanted to test it with the standard sort of off the shelf network cables was so that I knew what this on its own was doing. Improvements on sound quality using this versus not using it. Uh, so I, I tried this on our Antipodes K50 uh, music server. It's like a $22,000 music server streamer that we use with Rune and I thought it was good because I was able to use it both streaming and serving to see if it made a difference on both or just one of them. So for streaming, playing something from Tidal or Cobuzz, when I plugged this in with standard Cat5 cables, the sound got way bigger. There's a lot more body to it. The vocals were far more separated from the background music and also there was more depth. And when I added the Q source power supply to this, there was just a hell of a lot more focus down the middle. Again, more three dimensionality, and it was just a little bit less muddled sounding. Everything sort of fell into place. The sound staging became clear and accurate. Um, I don't want to downplay this as not having made a difference on its own because the Q source did make a huge difference, but this on its own still did make a big difference to the sound with that scale and body and just how the vocals seem to be completely separated from the background music. That previous test was playing something from Tidal, as I said. Um, I tried it also playing a song that was actually stored physically on the K50 and that K50 was then just plugged into a DAC. So in theory the music wasn't actually even going through this, but this was still plugged in. The reason I wanted to try this test was because I believed in theory by still having this plugged in, even though the music wasn't going through it, we are still eliminating noise in the system by having this in there as that kind of filter. It's preventing noise from our main network from getting in or anything else that's plugged into the system. Um, so when I did plug this in and played a song that was stored on the hard drive, the soundstage got quite a bit taller, interestingly, uh, a lot more open and the decay improved. So it sounded a lot more, just like a, a, a bigger, more airy sort of feel. And the string section that I listened to which is far more organic, like the strings uh, sounded really tangible and real. Yeah, it was, it was a really nice improvement and I was quite impressed to see that, as I suspected, plugging this in, even though I wasn't playing music through it, it still made a difference because it was isolating the music server from the noise of the rest of the network. And then I played it again, but with the Q source powering it instead, and that was again a big improvement. The background was way darker, um, the individual strokes of the strings were far more pronounced and strong sounding, like you could really, you could tell exactly how hard the cellist was pressing on the bow, like pressing them onto the strings, you could really feel the delicacy or the strength that he wanted to put into it. Yeah, improvements all around. Talking about network cables and whether you want to do premium network cables, it is something I highly, highly recommend. Um, you can pick up a premium network cable for a lot less than what you can pick up one of these switches for, so it's a really good place to start if you want to get into that realm of upgrading the sound of your streamer. Where you place the premium network cable, because this is something we actually tested out and tried all the different solutions, are you better off having a premium network cable going from the wall coming into the switch or coming from the switch out to the streamer or do you have to have both, that sort of thing. 
My finding was that it's actually very similar to the Nordos QB8 power system. You want the best cable in the whole system feeding the system. So that's to say if you have one premium Ethernet cable, you want that going from the wall into the switch and then feel free to use whatever patch leads or Ethernet cables you want coming out of it. A question arose, are you better off having one really good Ethernet cable or a network switch with some cheaper Ethernet cables? So we tried out this QNet with two Blue Heaven Ethernet cables that are uh, somewhere on the value of you know, 700 bucks each plus the switch and compared that to the one expensive Ethernet cable. And so the two systems ended up being pretty similar value, both around that sort of six or $7,000 price. And far and away, everyone in the room agreed that two Blue Heaven Ethernet cables with the switch definitely beat the one $7,000 Ethernet cable. So that's been our little video on the Nordus QNet, guys. I knew this video was going to be a bit controversial and there's probably still gonna be a bunch of comments saying that I don't know what I'm talking about and network switches make no difference and it's all ones and zeros. But to that I would say, try it, you know. Talk to your local Nordos dealer or if you're in Christchurch, New Zealand, give us a call and you can try this thing for free, no obligation, and just let your ears be the judge. That's the best thing I always say with all hi-fi things. If, if you think something might be snake oil, don't judge it until you've actually heard it. Don't do it based on principle or based on technically this and that. Let your ears be the judge. And if you like the way it sounds, then that's all there is to it. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Let us know what you think of network switches in the comments. Are they a bunch of hogwash? Do they actually work? I know that you guys are gonna comment anyway, but yeah, let us know what you think. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I will catch you in the next one. Kakatiano.